So it's not that they are out for war, but they may be locked into a spiral of measure, countermeasure, response, counter-response, which may escalate up a spiral. My deep anxiety is that it reminds me of the situation before the First World War. Coming up on The Big Story, Singapore's Foreign Minister Vivian Balakrishnan on the possibility of war breaking out. Hello, you're watching The Big Story with me, Chiao Su En. Subscribe to The Straits Times channel to stay up to date with our live news updates. In a moment, our interview with Dr. Balakrishnan. But first, the news headlines. About 1.2 million Singaporean households living in public and private residential properties will each receive a one-off $100 household utilities credit by next month. The credit will be directly disbursed to eligible households' SP service utilities accounts and can be used to offset SP group charges. The credit is part of a $1.5 billion package announced by Deputy Prime Minister Lawrence Wong in June to help lower-income families and vulnerable groups amid the rising global inflation. Police warn against property agent scams after close to 1,000 people lose $3.9 million to scammers posing as property agents. The scammers impersonate legitimate property agents and ask victims for payment to secure the rental of a unit before even viewing the property. Victims would typically respond to online property listings and contact the scammers using the contact numbers in the fake listings. So, if you're looking to rent a place, you might want to be extra vigilant. And in badminton, Lo Kian Yu's reign as world champion is over. The Singaporean world number 8 losing to Thailand's Kun Lavut Vitit San in Tokyo today. Lo telling ST that he has no regrets because he gave everything on the court. From Russia's invasion of Ukraine to US Speaker Nancy Pelosi's controversial visit to Taiwan, we are living in a time of rising global tensions. Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong said in his National Day rally speech that Singapore's external environment has become very troubled. Our region has enjoyed peace for so long that it is hard for us to imagine things being different. And that is why the PM called on Singaporeans to be mentally ready for disruptions to the region's stability. So, how can Singapore respond to these external dangers? Here's our interview with Foreign Minister Vivian Balakrishnan, who spoke to ST's Lin Li Fu. Thank you very much, Minister, for coming into our studios at The Straits Times. Now, during the National Day rally, PM used very strong words like uh, get real and uh, be psychologically prepared for the possibility of conflict in the region. Do you think Singaporeans are indeed psychologically prepared for such a conflict, if well, it happens? Well, the first point I have to make is that the world has entered a very dangerous phase. And when I say dangerous, I mean it in multiple dimensions. First, war on a scale and at a level which has not happened for many decades. Small risk, but a real risk and a rising risk. Second, if you look at the global economy, we are entering a new phase of higher prolonged inflation and higher interest rates. We're entering a world where global supply chains that used to be based on efficiency are being disrupted. Third, we've just emerged from a global pandemic, COVID-19, but the probability of a next pandemic arising has risen and the possibility that the next pandemic will have higher mortality rate than COVID-19 
is also a clear and present danger. Add to that the food security, and I would say even water security. Uh, we are going to face in the near future a food and water and energy crisis. A further dimension, if you look at things domestically, is that societies everywhere are facing greater division, disruption, polarization, and inability to agree on a set of facts, to agree on the right response, and erosion of trust and cohesion within society. So if you add all these things up, all these factors lead us to a unfortunate new phase of geopolitics with profound implications for all of us. Now, your question is, do Singaporeans get it? I think Singaporeans do. Singaporeans are realist. We are in that sense, you know, uh, we know that we have to take the world as it is and not be wishful about what we hope the world would be. So my sense is, yes, Singaporeans do get it. We are real. But perhaps the extent to which this risk, this is something which we need to have hard conversations on uh, and tough discussions with each other. Picking up on that, how can we be better prepared? And, and how will the government step up efforts to have us ready for such a conflict in the event of... Well, if you use a medical analogy, we need to be immunised to be prepared for the challenges which this brave new world is throwing at us. I would say number one is to be better informed. Read the papers. I know it may not be fashionable now, but or at least watch the videos from SPH, CNA. Understand what is going on. Uh, understand the driving forces behind the individual episodes and incidents which are occurring in the world. And then second, after being well informed, as I said, have these heart-to-heart -heart open and tough discussions with one another. Seek out especially people who have different views in order to stretch our minds and expand our perspectives. Third point is after recognizing and seeking out people with diverse views, understand that because Singapore is small and fragile and facing an even greater level of challenge for the future, we need to stay united, we need to stay cohesive, we need to stay capable of making plans, more important, executing plans. And if you, based on what we just went through over the last two and a half years with COVID, one key competitive advantage we had was trust and cohesion. And the fact that we instinctively looked out for one another, even whilst recognizing that we are diverse. Speaking about uh, seeking diverse views, reading the newspaper and watching you no know, news, um, all, all types of news, one specific challenge that PM raised was about social media and guarding against yes. hostile foreign influence, right? So we have so many things now on social media, WhatsApp, Weibo, WeChat, Facebook. How do we tell, you know, if you're seeking out diverse views, how do we tell whether a message is propaganda or, or really authentic, legitimate viewpoints? Are people trying to influence us? Are messages coming to us with ulterior motives? And the answer to it very clearly is yes. Precisely because we are small, but credible and relevant and independent. What Singaporeans think and say and what the government expresses on behalf of Singaporeans does matter. So you're right. 
on that whole tsunami of social media, private messaging platforms, we are all exposed to a very wide variety of messages, a significant number of which, in fact, originate outside Singapore, whose objective is not necessarily the long-term interests of Singapore, but to further their objectives. So it requires certain scepticism, a certain openness to facts, but not being gullible. And as I said, I again want to emphasize the need to check with credible sources of information. And here, you know, I would say our mainstream media remains a credible source of information. And we, it is important that we keep that reputation. So what PM is, is telling and reminding all of us is please be aware these things are going on. We are receiving it. And precisely because we are a multilingual, multiracial, open society, we are more vulnerable in that sense. But I still believe that Singaporeans are also sensible, pragmatic people. We're not just going to swallow everything hook, line and sinker. Your speech at the uh, recent ASEAN Foreign Ministers meeting in Cambodia, you said then that it was a dangerous moment, profoundly dangerous yes, moment. Okay. So, but at the same time, you expressed hope that US and China will work out an arrangement that allows for a, a peaceful coexistence, right? So, what kind of indicators will you be looking for in the coming months? Well, I stand by my assessment that this is still a moment of profound danger. As far as the US and China is concerned, unfortunately, things are not moving in the right direction. And the risk of a mishap or miscalculation is real. And in fact, rising. Is that your there is, of the situation? That's my current assessment of the situation. So profound danger and risk are rising. There is another dimension to it, which is, you know, you. I can also speak with personal, based on personal observations and interactions with the leaders of America, China, EU, and many other parts of the world. I do not believe any one of them are actually setting out to wage war on each other. But I do worry that there is a very real risk. Each party unilaterally deciding what its national interests are and what its response or counter response to the other party will be may inadvertently set itself up for an escalatory spiral. You get what I mean? So it's not that they are out for war, but they may be locked into a spiral of measure, countermeasure, response, counter response, which may escalate up a spiral. My deep anxiety is that it reminds me of the situation before the First World War. The major powers before the First World War did not set out for war. In fact, it was a period of great interdependence and even global trade at the turn of the last century. Nobody felt that war made sense. Nevertheless, a series of steps, incidents, mishaps, and this locked-in spiral led to a very terrible situation. So that's why I remain so concerned about the prospects of global peace. Now, having said that, you know, the, to be a diplomat, you must have some hope, some optimism. And the world is not short of global challenges, and the examples are 
a pandemic, climate change, food and water security. And if we could only elevate our gaze to these global challenges and, to, and immediately realize that this can only be solved if America and China and Europe and Asia and all the rest of us come up with a, for, a multilateral rules-based constructive response to protect the global commons. This is in fact the challenge of our generation and the next. That was Singapore's Foreign Minister, Dr. Vivian Balakrishnan. Check out the full interview on ST's YouTube page. Thank you for tuning in to The Big Story. Visit straitstimes.com for more news and our YouTube channel for more videos. Subscribe by hitting the red button below. I'm Chiao Suen and have a great weekend ahead.